All right, gang, here we go. Chem 1, Unit 8, Part 1. We're talking about stoichiometry. Now, this unit is kind of a smaller unit. It's only got three parts, okay? But every single thing in this unit is really, really important for your chemistry skills moving forward. We're only a little bit into the semester, and there's a long ways to go, and all of this stuff is going to apply throughout the rest of the semester. So it's really important to do practice problems and master it now so that here in about a month and a half you're not panicking because you don't remember the things, you don't know how to do the things that we learned how to do now. All right? So stoichiometry, here we go. Now, in order to do stoichiometry effectively, you have to be able to work with moles. So we're just going to review what a mole is real quick. We talked about this several units ago. Okay. So remember, we talked about moles as a way of counting. Remember, it's like a dozen, a dozen, you know, uh, there are 12 eggs in a dozen. Okay. And so there are 6.0 times 10 to the 23 particles in one mole. All right, so it's just a way of counting. So anytime you have a mole of anything, you always have this many particles. So if you have a mole and a half, you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd plus half again of that. All right, how much does a mole weigh? Well, it depends on what it is you're counting, right? Because, you know, if you have a, a one mole of marbles, that'll weigh a lot less than one mole of cars, okay? Uh, so, and specifically in chemistry, we, talk, we care about atoms and uh, molecules, so on and so forth. So in order to figure out what the molar mass is, okay, or the mass of one mole, we have to add up our molecules from the periodic table. Remember how we listed out all the atoms that were part of whatever molecule we were talking about and added them up, for example, like H2O, okay, H2O was made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen. Remember, we took this and we added it up and we looked at the periodic table. We found that, you know, oxygen, hydrogen was uh, 1.01 and then there was uh, 1 times 6 16.00 for the oxygen, and then we added it up from there, so it was 18.02 for the molar mass of water. Remember that? Okay, hopefully, maybe. Okay, and then how much space does one mole of a gas occupy at STP? Remember, STP means that you're at zero degrees Celsius, okay, and one atmosphere pressure, okay. So what, if you have exactly one mole of any gas at STP, it will take up 22.4 liters. All right, that's an important ratio to remember as well. So <clears throat> moles map review. Now, what does all this mean again? All right, so remember we can use these numbers to convert, and remember we created this map, so we had moles of some substance A, right? This is our, this is whatever we're talking about. Could be water, could be nitrogen, could be sulfuric acid, it doesn't really matter. And from here we can convert, we can say, oh, well we can go from uh, moles to grams of A, Okay, or mass of A by using the molar mass. Okay, and then we could also go from moles of A to uh, formula units. Okay, of A and remember formula units is how we talk about everything. They so they can be ionic compounds or molecules doesn't really matter. Okay, and in order to do formula units, we use Avogadro's number. Okay, and that's that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And then we can also from there go to uh, liters of A. Okay, if it's a gas, liters of A. And so that's where we use our 22.4 liters per mole. Okay. So, and the reason I wrote this all the way on the left is because we're going to move on and talk about this new thing called stoichiometry that allow us to convert moles of one thing to moles of another. Okay. So that's an important thing to remember. Okay, good. I was just making sure I didn't remember, rem uh, delete that. Anyway, so review examples. Okay. So we're just going to do one of these real quick. It says, uh, how many formula units are there in 0.35 grams of copper 1 sulfide? So we're starting with copper 1 sulfide. Uh, we have 0.35 grams. So remember, we're going to do our <clears throat> dimensional analysis here. So Cu2S. Okay. And so we're starting with grams. Okay. And we need to go to formula units. So we're starting up here. So we're going to go all the way down here. So this is going to be a two-stepper. We're going to use the molar mass to get to moles. And then we're going to use Avogadro's number to get to formula units. Okay, so that's our general game plan here. All right, so we're going to set up our parentheses. It's going to be a two-step. We can go ahead and write out. We already know it's two-step based on what it said on the uh, that flow chart there. So we're going to put grams in the bottom, moles in the top because that's that first step. Okay, so grams. So for every one mole, we always put. So remember, before when we're staying within the same molecule, we're going to put one with mole. Okay. Now that starting today, that trend changes, but we can handle it. Okay, now we need to figure out the molar mass of copper 2 sulfide. So we've got two coppers, 
one sulfur, okay, two coppers. They're coming after us, the coppers. All right, anyway. And so copper is uh, 2 times 63.55, okay? And then sulfur is 32.07. So the molar mass of copper one sulfide, so we say 2 times 63.55, plus 32.07, and we get 159.17, all right, so 159.17 grams, all right. <clears throat> now, so we've done this part, maybe I'll go ahead and write that in down there, 159.17 grams per mole, all right. So now we've got this guy down here, now we're in moles of copper one sulfide, so now we're going to go to formula units, so we're going to put moles down here, all right, for every one mole, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Okay, so we're going to take our, so in order to do this, we're going to take our 0.35 divided by 159.17 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, and so you get, when you punch it in your calculator, I highly recommend trying this out, pausing the video, making sure that you've got the same answer as me. So I got 1.32 times 10 to the 27th formula units, all right, of copper one, copper one sulfide. All right, so there you go. So that's all review, okay? So let's talk about balanced chemical equations. All right, we'd spent all the last unit talking about balanced chemical equations, how to make them, what they, what all kind of things they can tell us. Here's another thing they can tell us. All right, remember we threw out these we threw in these coefficients that helped us balance. So essentially this is saying we have two we have a nitrogen with three hydrogens makes two ammonia. Okay? And that's what this formula is saying. Okay? But specifically what do these coefficients represent? The coefficients either represent the number of formula units that you're talking about. Okay? So one molecule of nitrogen plus three molecules of hydrogen give us two molecules of ammonia. That's what this means. Or it can say tell us the number of moles, okay? So one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to form two moles of ammonia. These coefficients do not represent the mass or the volume of what you're reacting, okay? And that's because each of these things weighs a different amount, okay? And then if, in this case, okay, it wouldn't really matter because all these things are gases, but if one of these things was a solid or liquid, that 22.4 ratio that we just uh, reviewed doesn't hold true, okay? So we cannot use these two ideas, okay? But we can use these ideas that a molecule uh, and moles, all right, or formula units, okay? So this leads us to this idea of stoichiometry, all right? Stoichiometry is just a fancy word for the branch of chemistry that deals with proportions of reactants to products, or our ability to move to how many of each one we have and using proportions to help us figure out uh, what we started with or how much we're gonna make and so on and so forth, okay? So the coefficients, this is the important part here, right? Okay, right here, this is the important guy. The coefficients of a balanced chemical equation represent the number of molecules, okay? And really this should say formula units, okay? Or number of moles, of substances needed of each chemical to make products, all right? And we call this guy the mole-to-mole -mole ratio, all right? So here's a new tool in our tool belt called the mole-to-mole -mole ratio, all right? And so we're going to use this idea to expand our mole, our map. So based on what we just learned, okay, we can use the mole ratio, okay, to help us convert between two different roadmaps now. So we can convert using the mole ratio to moles of a totally different substance, B. And then from here, we can do all the same tricks. We can use molar mass, okay, to convert to uh, grams of B. All right, we can use uh, 22.4 liters to convert to uh, volume of B, okay, or liters of B. I guess I put liters over here, but whatever. Volume, and then we can use um, we can use Avogadro's number to convert to formula units, all right? So this gives us an ex uh, a new place we can go with our roadmap. So it says, how many moles of lithium hydroxide are required to react with 20 moles of carbon dioxide according to the equation below? Okay, so we're starting with 20 moles of CO2, all right? 
and we want to figure out how many moles of lithium hydroxide. So that's where we want to end up, and moles of CO2 is what we're starting with. Okay, so where we're starting, we're going to say uh, is, we'll say this guy's our A, all right, and lithium hydroxide is our B, all right, just to help us map ourselves. So if we look at the road map here, Okay, we're starting with moles of A, our carbon dioxide, and we're using we're going to use our mole ratio to get moles of B. All right, so this is going to be a one-step reaction. Okay, so we have moles of CO2. All right, so we go from moles of CO2. So we're going to put moles of CO2 in the bottom because that's what we need to cancel. This is what we started with, and we're going to moles of lithium hydroxide. All right. So that's easy enough. It's just canceling those units and going to the unit you want to stay with. Okay. Now what the numbers are simply the coefficients that go with either of them. So the moles of CO2, the coefficient for this guy is just a one, right? Because it's implied that there's a one right there. So we'll put a one with this guy. And then moles of lithium hydroxide, well, we've got that two right there. So we'll throw that two in front right there. Okay. So this is our mole ratio. So essentially what this is saying is we can take this and we're in moles of lithium hydroxide, which is what we want to find. So we'll just take 20 times 2. So we get 40 moles of CO2. All right. And then, so it really, and you could have figured this out on your own, just based purely on what we're starting with. It says we have 20 moles of CO2. How many lithium hydroxides do we need to react with all of these? Well, this is just saying that for every one CO2, we need to get two lithium hydroxides. So we'd have to have 40, if that makes sense. This is just a systematic way to always get the right answer. So here we go. We're just going to do some more reactions here. Okay. So it says how many molecules of oxygen are produced when 29.92 grams of water is decomposed by electrolysis? Okay. So we're starting with grams of water and we want to get to molecules. And remember, molecules is specific is the more specific term for formula units. Okay. So we want to get to formula units of B. Okay. This will be our B from formula units of A. Okay. So we're going to start with our 29.2 grams of water. All right. Now let's look at our roadmap and see how many steps we're going to have to do. Okay. So we're starting with grams of A, our 29.2 grams of water, and we need to get to formula units of B. Okay, because they're two different things. So we're going to have to use molar mass to get to moles of A, and then the mole ratio to get to moles of B and then the Avogadro's number to get to formula units. So this is going to be a three-step problem. All right. <clears throat> so first step is we got to get to moles of water. All right. So we're just going to start with grams of water. And we're going to moles of water. All right. And then from here, we're going to go from moles of water to moles of oxygen. So moles of water to moles of oxygen. All right. And then remember, our last step was to go to formula units. So we're going to go from moles of O2 to molecules, molecules of O2. Okay, and that was it, right? Because that's our molecules of oxygen. Now we got to go back and fill in our numbers. All right, so this guy here, we're going to use the molar mass. Well, we have to find the molar mass of water. We did it earlier, but we're going to do it again just for funsies. All right, so H2O, so we got two hydrogens, one oxygen. Going to add those guys up. So 2 times 1.01 plus 16.00, so we get 18.02, all right? So for every one mole of water, they weigh 18.02 grams of water, all right? Now we're going to go from moles to moles. Well, the moles to moles, we use the mole ratio. So we just look at our, our uh, coefficients and plug those in. So moles of H2O, well, that's a 2, right? So we'll throw that 2 in there. Moles of oxygen, that's a 1, so we'll throw that in there. All right, now we go from moles of O2 to molecules of O2. Well, that's Avogadro's number. So for every one mole, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. All right, so that's that. We're in the right unit, so now we're just going to plug everything in. Remember, if it's on the bottom, you divide. If it's on the top, you multiply. So we take our 29.2 divided by 18.02, okay, divided by 2 times Avogadro's number, 16.6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, and again, I highly suggest plugging this in your calculator. Make sure you do it all right, because it'd be really silly to do the hard part right, and then fat finger your calculator, all right, or not know how it works. All right, so here, I'll move myself up here real quick. Okay, so 
Uh, so, so, but we also have to think about sig figs. Remember our sig fig rules? So all of these are multiplication divisions. So the number of sig figs is to be equal to the lowest value from our multiplication or division. That's the 29.2. So we're going to round our answer to three sig figs. So you should have gotten 4.88 uh, times 10 to the 23rd. And our units would be molecules, molecules of O2. Okay. And remember, we can't shorten molecules to MOL or MOLE because that implies that it's a mole, right? MOL is the abbreviation for moles. Okay. A couple more, <clears throat> or at least one more. Yeah, one more, one more. We can do it. Okay. Aluminum bromide reacts with chlorine gas to yield aluminum chloride and bromine. What mass in grams of bromine is produced when three moles of aluminum bromide reacts with chlorine to form aluminum chloride and bromine? Oh my gosh, lots of chlorines and bromines. So first thing we always, always, always need in a stoichiometry problem is a balanced chemical equation. Okay, so they don't provide it. In the last two examples, I gave it to you. Here, we don't have it. So now we're going to have to come up with it on our own, which is the reason we learned how to do it last unit. Okay, so aluminum bromide reacts with chlorine gas to yield aluminum, bromine, aluminum chloride and bromine. All right, so aluminum bromide, so A, L, B, R. Okay, think about your charges. Aluminum is plus three, three plus. Bromine is one minus. So we need three bromines for each chlorine, okay? And then it says reacts with chlorine gas, right? Plus Cl2, okay? And remember it's diatomic and they say it's a gas, so we'll throw that in there. All right, to yield aluminum chloride. All right, so that's aluminum chloride. All right, aluminum's three plus, chlorine's one minus. It's a halogen, same as bromine, so it'd be that, plus bromine. All right, and bromine is elemental, and we know it's a liquid at room temperature. They didn't tell us what aluminum bromide was or aluminum chloride was, and it's a little trickier to, to understand or to predict these kind of things, uh, whether they're or not they're gases or uh, aqueous or solids. Anyway, so we're just going to run with it because we don't really know exactly what they did. All right. So, <clears throat> um, so it says what mass in grams, or we got to balance it first. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Always bounce. So one aluminum, one aluminum, three bromines, two bromines. All right. So we'll get our common factor of six. So two and three, which changes our aluminum. So we'll throw a two out there. All right. So aluminum and bromines are balanced. Number one chlorines, two chlorines, six chlorines. So we'll throw a three right there. So now we're balanced. All right, so it says, what mass in grams of bromine is produced when three moles of aluminum bromide react with chlorine to form aluminum chloride and bromine? Whew. So <clears throat> we want to know what mass in grams of bromine is produced when three moles of aluminum bromide reacts. Okay, so we're gonna start with our 3.00 moles of aluminum bromide. So that's our ALBR3. And we need to get to grams of bromine. All right, so this is going to be two step. Take a glance up at your uh, your chart there, and we're going to go from moles to moles, okay, moles, moles to moles, and then up to grams, okay. So first step is our mole ratio. So we're going to go from uh, moles of AlBr3 to moles of Br2. All right, so there's our bromine, and then we're going to go to mass of bromine. So uh, moles of bromine are going to go on the top or on the bottom, so it cancels for with what's up there to grams of Br2 at the top. All right, now we got to fill in our numbers. Okay, uh, this is mole ratio, so we just use the numbers from the balanced chemical equation. So AlBr3, so that's a two. Bromine is a three, so it's a three to two ratio. All right, now we're going to use uh, molar mass. So for every one mole, so we need our molar mass of bromine. Okay, so bromine, there's just two bromines, all right? So we'll say two times periodic, for bromine, 79.90, okay, we're gonna add those guys up. So, so two times 79.9, 159.8, grams per mole. All right, and technically it's eight zero. So anyway, so 159.80 grams per mole. And that's that, so now we're just gonna plug it all in. So we have three times three divided by two times 159.8, okay? We get 719.1, holy heck, that's a lot. All right, 719, all right, 0.1 
micrograms of bromine. But we got to check our sig figs here. Okay, this value here only has three sig figs. These are counted numbers, so they don't count, and that's got five. So our answer can only have three sig figs. So that means we got to round it to the third spot. So that's really going to be equal to 719 grams of Br2. All right, and so there's our answer. All right, so these are pretty, pretty tricky. There's a lot to remember. This is really, in my opinion, where chemistry starts to become chemistry. A lot of things we've been doing up to now really is just generally trying to get us to this point. All right, this is where we can really start learning about uh, reactions and what we can actually form and some of the actual practical applications of chemistry. So anyway, do your practice problems. Lots and lots of practice problems. Check your work. Make sure you're doing them right. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, and I'll see you on the flip side.